Our topic is dividing fraction. Okay? We all know how to divide fractions. If I have A over B divided by C over D, uh, who can tell me what this changes to? Really, division is, as we remember, by definition of division, we know what this becomes. It becomes what, class? Thank you, very good. Of course, you write the division into multiplication, and then you uh, write the reciprocal of C over D, which is D time, D over C. And of course, when you multiply them together, uh, what do we get, of course? How about Isabella? Exactly, A, D over B, C. And are we done here, uh, Spencer? Almost, but we have variables on the denominators. Guess what? Um, yeah. So what do we? So what kind of restrictions would you need? Yeah, and also D can be zero because look at the original expression. D was on the denominator. So yeah, so you gotta write these restrictions. Okay. Whenever you have variables on the denominators, right? You gotta look at the restrictions, right? Um, Wait. Yes. I thought restrictions were for the. Oh. Um, yeah, the, that D came from the original expression. Yeah. Okay. All right, may I move on? Yeah. Okay. So let's take a look at example one. Knowing that rule, well, it's really definition of division, isn't it? So 2P over Q divided by AP over 5Q. Okay, uh, so we have something like this. What are we going to do first here? How about uh, Lindsay? Exactly. So the, do we change the first fraction at all? No. What we change is whatever you see division, the number next to the division symbol, right? So division becomes multiplication. Instead of AP over 5Q, and Lindsay is correct, you need to write the reciprocal of that, 5Q over AP. And now look at the kind of questions that we have. Isn't this what we did last time, multiplying fractions? So it just becomes the same exact thing as what we did last time. So it's a nice review. This section is really a nice review. All you have to do is change division into multiplication with the same exact kind of problem that we had last time. Exactly. So you're going to cross cancel and so forth. Okay. Go ahead. Everybody finish this up. I'll wait. By the way, I'm going. I like to write things, you know, nicely with the numbers together or the ones with the variables together. You know what I mean? Like, because all of these are factors, right? You have everything as a multiplication. Go ahead. Everybody try. I'll wait. Uh, so what do we do next here? How about Chuck? What should we do? Mm -hmm. And then you um, simplify it, so it's 5 over 4. Mm -hmm. And then the restrictions are um, P, wait, no, Q can equal 0, and P can equal 0. Right. I actually wrote it this way first. Is this okay, Chuck? Like, I just separate them. Because it's easier to see how I'm going to cancel things out, right? Is that okay? Yeah, you could just do cross cancel. But... Uh, like I said, what if there's addition symbol here? People would just blindly cross cancel things without really knowing what they're really doing. You know what I mean? Because if there was an addition sign here, you cannot cancel Q and Q up here. Yeah, you can't do that. The only time you could cross cancel, remember I told you, cross cancel, cross should remind you of what operation? Cross multiplication, right? So you can only cross cancel when you have multiplication symbol. Does that make sense? So in order for me to show you that you can't really cross cancel like this, if you do it this way, you will not make that silly mistakes because you know that if you have addition, you can't do it. You cannot write it this way, can you? Does that make sense? Do you see why I take this one more step? Because I make so many mistakes, I, I don't want to make mistakes. So that's what I do to remind myself I can't just cross cancel like that. So here, of course, you get uh, 5 over 4 times 1 times 1. What's P over P, class? One. What's Q over Q, class? One. Yeah, one. so you get, and yeah, you get two restrictions because you know, your original expression, right, turns to be this way. So you have two variables in the bottom. All right, may I go to the next example? Pretty yeah. straightforward. Yeah. Yes? Do you see how it's very similar to what we did last time? It's a nice review, this section, isn't it? Okay. Here's example two. Uh, 5t minus 10 over t minus 5 divided by 
t minus 2 over 2. Of course, as you see, you have division sign there. We know what division really means. It's really multiplying by the reciprocal. Who could tell me how I should rewrite this? How about Patty? Exactly. Do we change the first fraction at all, class? No. no. Okay. And then you change the division into multiplication, and now we get something that we're used to. All right? We've been doing this since last time. So, by the way, oh, nothing looks like it's going to cancel. So should I just multiply the whole numerator together and so forth? No. I don't think I want to do that. You're right. Oh, Let me, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Yeah. Eugene, yeah. Eugene, what should I do? Um, parentheses, uh, five, uh, five times. Yes, instead of writing 5t minus 10, you know that there's a GCF of 5, you should factor that out. Now, things look sort of nice, right? Now we could cancel some of these things. Okay, go ahead, everybody finish it up. I'll wait. So, did you all get, oh, actually, let me ask some. How about Samuel, P, what do you think? Sure. All right. So what did you get when you did that? Okay. So did you cancel out like this? Is that what you mean? Yeah. Good. Do you see how I could rewrite t over t minus two over t minus two? Right. We have the same factor on the numerator and the same factor on the denominator. Right? These are factors, right? They're all multiplying together. And then, of course, 5 times 2 over 1, 1 over t minus 5. How many people got the answer? 10 over t minus 5. Raise your hand. Good. How many uh, restrictions would you get on this one? How about Eunice? 2. You're right. And do you know what those are, Eunice? What are those 2? Oh, yeah, Eunice. Zero? Actually, no. T could be zero. Look at the denominator. Before we cancel everything out, look at. We got T minus two, right? Before we cancel things out, that's what we need to look at. We got T minus two as one of the factor. We have one and T minus five as the other factor. So, what are your restrictions? T can't equal to five. T can't equal to five. That's definitely sure. Okay. And yeah, even though we cancel this out, right? Because it belonged to our original expression, we need to write those out. And I even did the work right here. I'm asking myself, when will t minus 2 be 0? Well, you add 2 to the both side. When t is 2, then, right, the whole thing will be 0. We, won't, we don't want that. When will t minus 5 be 0? Well, you add both 5 to both sides. And so you're right, there are two restrictions. You see how it's sort of like the uh, zero product property, right? Kind of that idea. Except whatever it makes 0, we can't use those because it makes the denominator go to 0. Any question? I forgot two of these restrictions. Along, along with the correct answer, 10 over t minus 5. Very good. And if you didn't, do you see what's wrong, what you did wrong then? Okay. Yeah. Any question there? We, may I move on? Okay, good. All right, here's example 3. Now we have a trinomial. T, I mean, y squared plus 3y minus 10 all over y squared minus 16 divided by 2y minus 4 all over y plus 4 is our question. The first step... Actually, it's the easiest step that you're going to do. Carly, what are we going to do here? We got division, so we don't like division. So how are we going to change this? Oh, um, keep the first part. Mm. Keep the first part the same. Then? Y plus 4 over 2, y minus 4. Exactly. And looks like nothing's going to cancel out, right? I don't see any factor on the numerator and the denominator. I don't see any, right? Same factors on the top and the bottom. What are we going to do? Yeah, you guys... Not only that, you have to factor all these. Not only do you see a difference of square on the bottom here, what about that trinomial? Do you think you should try to factor that trinomial as well? Yeah. So they're hoping that things will cancel out, right? What about this 2y minus 4? Can we do anything with 2y minus 4 in the denominator? Yeah. Yes, we can, GCF. right? GCF, very good. What about y plus 4? No. That you can't really do much. But everything else you could factor, right? Go ahead, everybody try. I'll wait. Who could help me how to factor that trinomial on the top? Left, how about uh, Michael? Were you able to factor this trinomial y squared plus 3y minus 10? Yeah. What'd you get? I got parentheses y plus 5 and then parentheses y plus 2. 
Okay, y plus y, y minus 2 is right. Very good. And then on the top, you know, the numerator of the second fraction, you can't really do much there. So I just wrote y plus 4 in parentheses, right? We won't multiply these. Okay, next, what about y squared minus 16? How about Eric? Yeah, how do I factor y squared minus 16? Oh, 2y, I mean, y plus 4, y minus 4. Exactly, y plus 4 times y minus 4. This is the difference of two squares, right? Good, everybody should be able to see that right away. All right, Dana, what about 2y minus 4? Is there a way to factor that? You got it, and there you are. And don't we like this? I can see, right, the factors that are the same on the top and the bottom. Mm -hmm. All right, and so what? can I cancel that, y plus 5? No. Oh, what about y minus 2? Yes. Yeah, there's y minus 2 on the numerator as a factor. It's a, you see how it's a factor? It's multiplying the whole thing. And then you got another factor, y minus 2 on the bottom. You could cancel those out because you could divide top and bottom by y minus 2. That's what we're doing when you're canceling out. Uh, of course, you could cancel out y, minus, y plus 4 and y plus 4, right? But same way if I wrote it this way, you know, nicely, right? So that they line up like this. Okay, what's our answer? How about then Angel? Exactly right. And you even multiply these out, right? At the end, if you can, you should multiply it out because when you simplify, right, after you factor everything, after you cancel out everything, you should always simplify. So you get, you're right. y plus 5 over 2y minus 8. And do you see why I got three restrictions? Right? Because I have three factors, right, with variables on the bottom. So y can't be 4, y can't be negative 4. So th that's the first one. Y can't be 4 is because you have y minus 4 on the bottom. Y can't be negative 4 is because you had y plus 4 on the bottom. Even though they canceled out, it doesn't matter, right? We got to use the original. Y minus 2 is down here, therefore y can't be 2. Lindsay, question? Yeah. Um, so, like, on the test equation, is it, like, at the flat set, you don't multiply it out? Like, no, I, I'll still get it, give it to you. Are you supposed to, like, do that? Yeah. When you, when you give me the answer at the end, the answer should be always simplified. Oh. Yeah, simplify means you don't want any parentheses. But if you give it, leave it factor. Actually, we kind of like a factor too, so we'll take it. It's fine. Yeah, for this type, it's fine. Yeah. But try to simplify at the end. Okay? Yeah. Any question? Easy? All right, may I move on to the next one now? All right, good. Here's example four. A squared over B times 2A over B divided by A over B, the whole thing cubed. So write it this down. Think about what we should do first. By the way, do you think we need to still follow the order of operation? Yes. Yes, you always follow the order of operation. So that should give you a hint as to what you should do first. Okay? So, who could tell me what to do here? Uh, Chris, following the order of operation, what, we sh what should we do here, Chris, first? Exponents first, right? Do you see the exponent 3, over, right? To a over b. What does that become when you simplify that? Because that's what we need to do first, following the order of operation. Aaron, what would a over b, the whole thing q, give you? Hmm? Can I choose to, uh, a squared over b times 2a times over b mm -hmm. divided, divided by a cubed over b? You're right, exactly. Very good. Does that make sense, guys? So you gotta follow the order of operations, right? Whenever you do any math problems. Okay, then, are we going to change anything with the first two fractions at all? No, let's rewrite the division into multiplication now, right? So who could tell me how to do that? Lynette, tell me what to write. A squared over B times 2A over B times B cubed over B. Exactly, you write the reciprocal. And now, sort of nice, uh, before we do anything though, I got a squared times 2a on the numerator times b cubed. What is a squared times 2a? Let's simplify that first. Do we, do we know how to multiply a squared times 2a class? Yeah. What do we get? 2a cubed. 2A cubed. What about b times b down here? b squared. B, b squared. So can I just write it this way first? All right. Then oh, oh, everybody finish up. I'll wait. It should be straightforward from here. So uh, who could help us here? How about Jenny? What do I do next? What, do I, what should I do next here?
can I rewrite the re rewrite these so that they line up nicely? So can I write it this way? Two over one, right? Times a cube over a cube times b cube over b squared, right, Jenny? Right, because we have a cube here. I wrote it on, right underneath because you know I could change the order in which I multiply, right? Community property multiplication. So what is a cube over a cube, Jenny? One. What is b cube over b squared? B. So guess what the answer is? Two B is correct. And you see how? Okay. And you see how we get two uh, two restrictions, right? There were two variables on the bottom, A and B. So A can't be zero or B can't be zero. Okay. Thank you. Any question? Right? Where did I get? Oh, where did I get two over one from? Oh, well, yeah. you had two a cube. Well, isn't that really two over one times a cube over b? Yeah. So, so wait, I got two b over a. You did? Yeah. But didn't you have a? So when you multiply a squared times two a, didn't you get two a cubed? Yeah. And then don't you have a cube on the bottom here? Wait, I got oh two a. Cube. Yeah, two a cubed. Okay. Okay, it shouldn't be squared because remember this is a squared times a. You're multiplying a three times, right? So yeah, did you see a mistake? Any other questions? Are we good? Do you see it now? Okay, okay. If you didn't fix it now, guys, I'll give you time. Here, go ahead. Okay. Uh, by the way, on your homework, you're gonna like this. They're gonna say something like this. From now on, assume no denominator is zero. What? What do we like that? What? Yeah. So you, this means you don't need to write down the restriction. But on the test, do you think I'm going to ask you from? Yeah, so uh, yeah. for this section, they can say, okay, you've had enough practice of writing restrictions, right? Uh, we're going to ask, you know, they're going to say this. But you shouldn't, but some of you still need some practice on writing restrictions, so be careful. All right, let's look at next example now. There we go. Okay, let's all do this example 5a. Uh, this is actually pretty straightforward. It has no variables at all, just numbers. Half divided by 1 over 5 times 3 over 4. Uh, so, the reason why I give you this example is because sometimes people not sh people when I give this people are not so sure which one to write the reciprocal of. So, half divided by one half times three fourths. Do I need to just write down reciprocal of one over five or also the three fourths? Just, one. just, just one, one over five is correct. Whenever you divide or multiply, right? This, we're all using the order of operation, right? Well, division and multiplication, you go from left to right. Correct? Because they're on the same level. So you basically just look at these two first. That's what you're looking at. Isn't that right, guys? Yes? So you don't worry about this 3 fourths that's multiplying this. So when you just look at these two, how would you rewrite this? Half divided by 1 over 5. What does that mean, class? 1 over 2 times 5 over 1. Isn't that what it means? Okay, and of course, then you're multiplying what? 3 fourths. 3 fourths doesn't change at all. Okay, so sometimes people fix it. Yeah, question? We'll do another one like that, yeah. Yeah. So, so we'll, we'll show you. Hold, hold on. So, so we'll after, let's just finish a couple of these first. Then, of course, we're going to multiply these together. Of course, this is very simple. Who could tell me the answer? How about Camilla? Yeah, 15 over 8. Easy enough? Yeah, but we, we can't really simplify here, can we? Nothing cancels out. All right, what about if I give you something like this? This looks very similar. I got half divided by, now there's a parentheses between 1 over 5 times 3 over 4. So using the order of operation, what, do we, what should we do first here? How about uh, Libby? Um, you should multiply 1 fifth by 3 fourths. Yeah, I'm going to multiply 1 fifth by three times four because it's in parentheses, right? Following the order of operation. So we simply get one over two divided by three over 20, correct? All right, of course, what do we do next here, Mimi? Uh, you do one, one over two times 20 over three. Exactly right, one over, one over two times 20 over three, and of course we could cross cancel, it's multiplication, right? So you're safe to cross cancel. Guys, remember, cross cancel, remember that cross means multiplication. You have to have things in as a product. Okay, then we get 10 over 3 as the answer, right? Do you see how even though they look very similar, right? These two questions are going to give you different answers. 
depending on which one you do first. You see what I mean? Huh? Do you see that? Okay, now, this is one that Lindsay, you've been, you'd ask. Look, we got all division here. One over two divided by one fifth divided by three fourths. Right? Do you think, would, would the answer be any of these, 15 over eight or 10 over three? No. Yeah, I don't think so. Okay, so let's look at it. So for divisions, again, divisions are like multiplication, right? Same order. They're all divisions. So which one do we do first, class? First two. First two, from left to right. So we just look at the first two, and wouldn't the first two become simply one over two times, right? We just look at the first two numbers. I don't even worry about what I have afterwards because everything's division. I look at one over two divided by one over five. Isn't that same as one over two times five over one, the reciprocal of one over two? Yes. All right, does that answer your question? Yeah. And now, do we change the number next to it at all? Yes. No, it's still divided by three fourths, no. right? Okay. Right. We just do two at a time. Okay. Okay. You could actually write this reciprocal if you want at this point. But anyway, what is one over two times five over one? Five over two times four over three. Right. And then the twos cancel out. You see how we get ten over three? Yeah. So yeah. So you could have. Oh, is this the same answer as the other one? Yeah. That's which one? Oh, yeah, right, 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 right. It does give you the same answer. Do you know why you get the same answer? Because when you rewrite this, you get half times 5 over 1, right? Then you, you're dividing by 3 fourths. Guess what? This is 4 over 3. And isn't that same as what we had up here, really? Yes. Yeah? Okay, so C and D are actually, you're right. C and D are actually the same thing. Isn't that right? You multiply these two and divide, that's the same thing as dividing this. Any question? Does this make sense? Can you do something like this for your homework tonight? All right, good.